things you need to be aware of. You know, we took up an offering to support our law enforcement officers throughout the county, and I just wanted you to know that the a, a gift card that they can do however they wish to uh, has been delivered to the police department, and that we have some ready for the sheriff's department. So thank you for giving them a little bit of support and a pat on the back for helping us keep our community safe. And thank you for participating. We had a request to take the prayer, the bus with the prayer banner on the side of it over to the Saltville Medical Clinic, thanks to Marcy Rosenbaum. And we took it over there, and they have been greatly appreciative for it. The reason it was suggested is even better than the results. Uh, they are monitoring people and testing people for the COVID-19, and a lot of them are kind of volunteering that some of their time and working really long hours to try to help keep things under control in that community. And so when we pulled the bus in, a bunch of them said, holy cow, thank you for thinking about us, and we really appreciate it. So if you know of another place it needs to go, if you'd like Marcy to give us a good suggestion, uh, half banner, we'll travel, if you just give us a little bit of notice. Don't forget that you can keep informed by contacting the Facebook page for the church. There's a YouTube channel that you can subscribe to, and then you'll be stuck with it the rest of your life, thank goodness. And the web page, you know, get information off of our web page. And here's an example. The crop walk for Southwest Virginia is going to take place October 11th through 18th. And since we can't all get together in huge groups, it's going to be online and a virtual crop walk. And so there will be more information in the days ahead on the church web page. But if you'd be interested in that, please put that on your calendar for October the 11th through the 18th. This is a very special week, and so uh, we have an honored guest to come and make an announcement. Uh, uh, Linda Crowder is the regent of the Daughters of the American Revolution, and this is Constitution Week, and she'd like to tell you some facts about that. Thank you, Denton. Constitution Week was proclaimed a law in the 1950s, and that law was signed by Dwight B. Eisenhower. So, and a lot of times, nobody knows about it. You all know how to celebrate the 4th of July. That's when the Declaration was signed. But in September, on the 17th, a very hot summer day, a group of men who had put themselves inside Independence Hall and argued and thought and argued some more finally signed something that formed our government, and that's the Constitution. DAR is asking people all over the world, because we have chapters in other countries, to ring the bells at 4 o'clock on Constitution Day. That is the time that the uh, Declaration, excuse me, that the Constitution was signed. So step outside your door and ring the bell. And if you're down to Maine, you will hear our church bell ringing at 4 o'clock on Thursday, the 17th of September. Thank you. I don't know if you're aware of it. Our Constitution is the oldest and the shortest governing document of any country in the world and the longest lived. And so uh, if you've ever been a member of a church committee meeting, <laughs> I'd like to point out that that amen was from the preacher. You know how difficult it is to be concise and thorough and pre precise. So that the Constitution has even survived this long in its entirety. And sometimes we pick and choose, kind of like we do our Bible, of what parts we like. But the fact of the matter is, it's an amazing document. And thank you for inviting us to celebrate in the celebration with you. All right. Prayer requests this week. Oh, wait, I got one more announcement. I, was, I got to talk to our district superintendent this week. And you know, you all, some people are nervous about wearing masks and social distancing and cars and everything. But it turns out, you know, we video record this so we can put it on the uh, internet on Tuesday. And in talking to the district superintendent, she said, oh, I was reviewing your, the video of your worship service. And I'm a little concerned about people not social distancing. And I said, well, they're all re related, so it's irrelevant. But she said, I'm proud of you for your mask and the way you are doing it to keep everybody safe. 
So I really appreciate y'all uh, going with the rules, and I want to go one step further. If somebody comes and attempts to talk to you in this area in our worship service without a mask on, please say, I'm sorry I can't even participate, because I didn't understand why James was on pins and needles about this, but by the DS reviewing the video during the week, and maybe even the bishop reviewing that video during the week, since we are as high as we are in Smith County, this could be shut down overnight, uh, like on Wednesday night after they review that video tape. So help us enforce, I think peer pressure may be the best thing we can do to encourage each other to wear a mask. We're uh, praying this week for Sister Claire Ruth, continuing her uh, re recovery. Chris Offenberg, uh, Judy and Bob Lawrence are having some medical issues. Uh, Stephen and Brandy Dennett, we continue to remember in prayer. Jerry Hall had his surgery this past week, but we have had no more information than that. Tissy Greer is uh, trying to recover from hip uh, fall and surgery. Stephen Whitworth still needs our prayers. He's, he's uh, recovering slowly but surely. And Sister Dina Landers is going to be having some surgery on September 23rd and ask if we keep her in our prayers. And Sister Frankie Farrell has uh, been diagnosed with a very serious illness, and her family is struggling with some issues that they're going to have to decide some, uh, make some decisions about in this coming week. So please be in prayer for her. And we remember Glenn Wilson and Mary Alice Johnson uh, in our prayers. They're both recovering from medical issues. So are there other prayer requests you know that we should add to this list? Joy? Brother Whitworth's in the hospital. Please remember that September is Suicide Awareness Month. The month is Suicide Awareness Month. Yes, please remember that in your prayers. Yeah, there's this is this situation we're going through is affecting a lot of people very seriously psychologically that you may not realize or you may realize, and we need to be aware of that and sensitive to it. And watch out for our brothers and sisters. Okay. Thank you. Oh, boy, there's a hand out that way. Sister Sturgill. Every and Henry Campus, huh? I hope it doesn't look like some of the ones I saw on the news the other night.
go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, merciful God, how great and wonderful you are. Great is your name. In all the earth, in all of creation, in all of the universe. How worthy you are to be given praise and glory, attention and adoration. Great are your works and doing under the heavens and on the earth, creating, loving. Sharing and giving, comforting and strengthening, equipping, growing, teaching, all these things, oh God, you do in the world. So this day we come to gather, to praise, to adore. to confess that we have not loved you as we should. We've committed acts of omission as well as commission. And at times we have been less attentive to what we should do and how we should be. We've sought our own agenda and our own path. Instead of making your way our way, your path, our path. So as we come this morning, set our course anew to serve you, love you, to receive from you the forgiveness that only you can give. We give you thanks, O oh God. Thanks for your gifts, which are many, your blessings, which abound. Your Holy Spirit, which sustains and strengthens and guides your word, which is a roadmap for these days. Your Son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. God, as we come, we come bringing to you those who are hurting and grieving, those who are just dealing with much, those who are in the hospital, those who are meeting at the funeral home, those who are recouping and rehab, those who are healing at home, those who are awaiting surgery and diagnosis, those who are struggling with news of tests, those who are dealing with decisions to make. For in a measure of your grace in such a way that there is strength and comfort And because you are who you are, and because you are near, you give hope. We thank you, O oh God, that we can gather as we do, and uh, gather in this way to know that uh, your worship, your time of being with us, and us being with you, though different like we're used to, you are here, you are with us. And that is the best of all. We thank you for birthdays and anniversaries, opportunities to remember our history and our who we are as a people. We thank you for the times of, of ministry, just a crop walk, and food pantry, and other things that allow us to, to serve and do and give. Bless all these efforts that they be a means by which you are changing the world and changing this community. And we pray to you in the name of your Son Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Simply 
baking bread. In general, the struggle with focus is twofold. People don't know how best to be using their time to do the things that are most important to them. Even, and even if people did know, the schedule is so completely full, finding the time is an issue. As a church, we have some awesome, awesome work we want to do. As a family of God, we have something we want to share with the world. We have friends and family that we want to build thriving relationships with. A way to regard and consider focus is that it's not a personality type. Have, have, you, ever had, have you ever said, oh gosh, that person is so focused. That's just their personality. Have you, you ever said that? Maybe, maybe, not, maybe I'm the only one. Okay. Um, but focus is not so much a personality type as it is a skill. And it's, if it's a skill, it's something that can be learned. It's something that can be acquired in the one's skill set. Focus is so important to faith and faith development. It's important for any congregation to have focus. It's important for any person seeking a relationship, an authentic relationship with Jesus. There has to be focus. A CNN article uh, reported a Pew Research study this was before the pandemic, as to why people do or don't attend religious services. Some answers were unsurprising. Americans who don't believe in religion don't usually attend services. Duh. Do you believe in God? No, but I'm going to church. Huh? I mean, that's kind of a, that's on the duh list. Or as, I, as I've come to say lately, it's on the duh, duh list. If, if you want to know more about that, ask, ask me after church. But the survey com, uh, complicates other stereotypes. It, it's complicated. It, 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 it complicates or puts together other stereotypes who rarely, if ever, attend religious service. And as it turns out, people who rarely attend religious services are not atheists or even members of the spiritual but not religious crowd. Have you heard that? Spiritual but not religious. In the survey, Many say religion is actually an important part of their lives. They lean conservative politically. The top ten reasons why Americans who attend religious services at least once a month, and here they are in order. Number one, you do drum roll. There. <laughs> Number one, to become closer to God. That should give us all a little bit of comfort. Number two, so their children will have a moral foundation. Number three, become a better person. For comfort in times of sorrow. Number five, I like this one. They find the sermons valuable. Number six, they will want to be part of community. I'm surprised that's number six. I'm surprised it wasn't number two or three. To continue their family's religious traditions. Number eight, they feel obligated to go. There is a concept called healthy guilt. There's also a concept called, I'm going to get a really hard time if I don't go. Number nine, to meet new people or socialize. Number ten, to please their family, their spouse their partner. And here are reasons why people don't go to church. 
They practice their faith in other ways. That was number one. They're not believers. Well, there you go. You don't go to church if you're not believing in that which the church espouses. No reason is very important. Why don't you go to church? No reason. You just don't. Kind of, kind of perplexing on how to how to engage in conversation. Th this one hurt. Uh, they don't like the sermons. They don't feel welcome. That's a, that's a big reason why people want to go to church. They don't have time. They don't have time. I think a lot about time. Did you know that on a box of Pop-Tarts there's microwave instructions? If you got a microwave, a Pop-Tart, in order to have some breakfast, Say this in love. You might want to think about loosening up your schedule just a little bit. And, and the, another reason why people don't attend church, and, and this is very understandable, and, and I think we all know folks that, that struggle with this, the poor health or mobility. They want to come, would like to come, they just can't because of health or just, you know, getting in and out of the car is a real issue. Of those who believe in religion but don't regularly attend religious services, nearly 7 in 10 still identify with a particular tradition. And most of those identify with Christianity. Within all these numbers, a lot of people will not be interested in this, this illustration of this year. Some will take real note and won't look it up. Within all these numbers as to why people do or don't attend church is focus. What we do, how we live as followers of Jesus in the church family is a response to God's love and action in the world as revealed in Jesus Christ. What hooks somebody to attend church? What is the church's place at the table in society? And in culture. And that answer is being written right now. What will people dedicate themselves to in order to make a difference? Our identity is very much in being the presence of God in the world today. Tangible, actual, alive. We have shared a story of, we have a shared story of purpose. Be disciples to make disciples. That is our mission. That is God given, that is Bible. If there's another agenda, shut it down. Because the only agenda of the church, our mission, the one we all share together, despite age, differences, whatever, is to be disciples to make disciples. We are mission driven. We live it, we do it. If we see a need, We meet it. If there's an occasion to serve, we step up. The focus is the mission. Our focus is the mission. We are captured by that, rekindled. By that. A lot of folks say, well, you know, what we do as a church is we're just trying to survive. That is not our mission. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And in the process, we will survive. And in the process, 
more so than survival, we will thrive when we have focus on the mission. We lay claim to the mission, and rightly so. The mission is the beat of our heart. It's who we are as a congregation. So we're going to deal with questions about right sizing and right alignment. We're going to talk about what works here versus some other place. How are we engaging our community in meaningful ways? All that's about determining things like outreach, impact on giving, Involvement, what is needed in order to be successful in the mission. If at core the focus is the mission, that is what is going to draw people. That is what is going to encourage people. It's what's going to inspire. Growth, spirituality, attendance, increased giving. All those things that tend to be talked about in a congregation. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it is byproducts of focus. And the focus is make disciples. How? Be disciples. There was a woman who was ready to leave her church because of all the things that she noticed that were wrong at the church. And she went to her pastor and complained. She said, I won't be going to your church anymore. The pastor responded, well, well why? She says, I saw a woman gossiping about another member, a man that is a hypocrite. The worship team is living wrong. People are looking at their phone during the service. There's so many things wrong with this church. The pastor replied, well, okay. But before you go, do me a favor. Take a full glass of water and walk around the church three times without spilling a drop. Afterwards, if you still feel the way you feel, leave. The lady thought, this is too easy. So she got a glass, filled it with water, and she walked around the church. Just imagine doing that around our building. Walked around the church three times. She didn't spill a drop. And when she was done with the request, she went to the pastor. She said, well, I'm ready to leave. And the pastor said, okay, before you leave, I want to ask you one more question. When you were walking around the church, did you see anyone gossiping? No. Did you see any hypocrites? Well, no. Was anyone looking at their phone? No. You know why? The lady said, no. You were focused on the glass to make sure you didn't stumble or spill any water. It's the same with our life. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, we don't have time to see the mistakes of others. We will reach out a helping hand to them and concentrate on our walk and getting to know Jesus more. Any church, there's going to be something to complain about. In the last six months, I've gotten a lot of complaints. All having to do with the pandemic and things associated with the pandemic. A church is filled with people who aren't, who aren't perfect. And the pastor is one of them. Only Jesus is the perfect example. So let's focus on Him. The focus of the mission. The letter to the Hebrews says that we should fix our eyes on Jesus, 
the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So we keep our eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished his race, the race we're in, the race we're running, the journey we're on, individually and together. We studied how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. He put up with so much along the way. The cross, shame, whatever. And now, he is right alongside God. We must fix our eyes on Jesus. We keep looking at him in faith. He's more than our example. He is our final destination. We must run toward Him with all our might in the hope and the promise that in doing so, we are then conformed, shaped into His image. As the perfecter of our faith, He's the one who brought faith into completion. He didn't just start faith, He finished it. He's Jesus is the one who blazed the trail. He's the one who makes the way so we can come into God's presence. Jesus did it through the cross and resurrection and is now with God. He looked forward. Jesus looks forward with joy to people who would be saved. that would come into the fold. As he said it himself, he is the one who willingly gave his life for the sheep of the fold. The original audience of the book of Hebrews were Jews who had professed faith in Christ but were now facing persecution for believing. And they were tempted to turn back, to renounce Christ, to go back to the temple, and go back to the sacrificial system. Believers who read the book of Hebrews today are forced in dealing with a similar temptation. Now, not following Jesus is a lot easier than following Jesus. Not running and keeping the faith is a lot easier than running and keeping the faith. It's a lot easier to just kind of set our own way and do our own thing than it is to say, Jesus is my way. Jesus is my thing. We can't. We can't. And I'm going to use a, a rather large theological word here. We can't. Dilly dally. Sorry, you know, sometimes those seminary words just fit. Jesus is our supreme example. He blazed the way, finished the race, paid for our sins, and is now seated in the place of highest honor and authority. That is Jesus. We look to him not only as our example, but as our source of strength. And it's in His atoning work, Christ's perfection leads to the perfection, the wholeness, the completeness of His people. Christ, Jesus, represents the greatest suffering in all of history. He took upon Himself all the sins of humanity, your sin, my sin. He took it all on. And the result is life now and later. So how does one keep their focus? You know, again, it's
It's a skill. It means we can learn it. It means we can develop it. For me, it's, it's, it's trying to stick with a Bible reading plan. Uh, being grounded in the Word. In, in the car, I listen to a lot of talk radio, both liberal and conservative, and I keep the dial on uh, the radio uh, set station of Christian radio, so I'm listening to good stuff, preaching and music. Uh, basically, the idea of garbage in, garbage out. You know, what goes into me is what's going to come out of me. Uh, I've been working on, I, I, will, I, should, I should confess, since I'm up here preaching, I was working a lot with digital health, uh, considering uh, my time, how much time I was spending on my phone and my iPad, you know, to, to look at this and that, you know, the all-important Facebook uh, app and, and, and certain games that I, that I like to play, just, I, I tell my wife it challenges my brain, and I, I, I think that's sometimes my excuse. Um, not being so wrapped up in the digital side of things, but more in the people side of things. And that's been hard to do in a pandemic when we've been told to stay at distance or stay away. Something that, that keeps me focused and grounded is having a three-year-old in my house. Um, I play a few moments with Kaylee. You know, she takes great fascination in looking at the birds, uh, how to how to clean up uh, a spill of milk that Dad made uh, on Saturday. Play with the dog. And it's not so much focus at the expense of what needs to be done or uh, in the expense of focus on what needs to be done or, or the responsibilities I have. But it's more, but more having a focus on the things that really matter and are substantive. Prayer is talking with God. Talking with God like I talk with no other. But also is try to I think I do well with this most of the time. So I'm still growing. Is to, is to watch what I say and how I respond because it says much, oftentimes more than words. Focus. It's something we can learn. It's something that we can develop. There's an old Cherokee teaching his son about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to his grandson. It's a terrible fight. It's between two wolves. One is evil, he is angry, envious, sorrowful, regretful, greedy, arrogant, wallows in self pity, guilty, resenting, lies, has false pride, overinflated sense of the ego. And he continued to tell his grandson, Ah, but the other wolf, he is joy. Peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion. And the old Cherokee told his grandson, the same fight is going on inside of you. And it's going on inside of every other person. The grandson thought about this for a moment and said, well, which wolf will we? The old Cherokee grandfather said, the one you feed. Our focus, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we hone, feed, work, run.
guide us, help us. That as this time of worship has been here, and we're doing worship and ministry in very unconventional and different ways, but it is it is with you and about you and centered on you, and so it is a time where we can connect with you. Guide us, lead us, help us to develop that focus. That our focus is on you and in you always. In the name of your Son. For his sake we do pray. Amen. Everywhere I go on this road, I know where I go, I go with you.